All right, so Dr. Oz, the Republican candidate for that Senate election up in Pennsylvania, is currently getting absolutely obliterated by John Fetterman in pretty much every way, shape, and form, whether it comes to their campaign contributions, their general online social media presence, the polling data that's been coming out. Everything is showing that Dr. Oz is underwater right now. And so, of course, he decided to go on Fox News, Laura Ingram's show specifically, uh, to basically piss and shit his pants and cry about the fact that he doesn't really understand why John Fetterman is doing so well. So let's go ahead and jump into this clip and I will commentate my way through it. Joining me now for the first time is Dr. Mehmet Oz, Pennsylvania's GOP Senate nominee. Dr. Oz, first, thank you so much uh, for being here. Um, now, this just broke tonight that Fetterman has confirmed he will make his first, it's called a major appearance in two months, but it's not a, it's not a meet and greet with voters, doesn't, doesn't seem to have like a big Q&A with the media, but it's a fundraiser. Um, is this guy a real populist? Yeah, he's not a po real populist. He's a pretend populist. In fact, mo many folks think because of the way he dresses with his hoodies and his shorts that he's been working his whole life. It's quite the opposite. He's not worked in the private sector. I spent my whole life, you know, working as my parents were immigrants, understanding the importance of dedicating my life to service. I, as a heart surgeon, I've invented devices. As you know, I've been very active in a lot of endeavors just to make America a healthier, better place. John Fetterman has been hiding from voters for the last few months. He last week said he was fine. I haven't heard from him since. And instead, they're focused on these snarky posts written by consultants. And no. Okay, I got to pause it here already because two different things, all right? Number one, he hasn't been out on the campaign trail doing these public appearances because the guy just had a fucking stroke. I mean, cut him a break for a little bit. He's still, you know, somewhat in recovering, and they're saying that he's going to be fine, hopefully, uh, in the long run, but he just had a fucking stroke. I mean, calm down, man. There's a reason why he hasn't been on the campaign trail. It's not like he's just been avoiding it. He hasn't just been, you know, avoiding public accountability or appearances. That's not the reason at all. So that's number one. But number two, a guy like Dr. Oz actually coming out here, or Laura Ingram for that matter, and pretending as if, what, they're the real populists and John Fetterman is a fake populist. I mean, I think that, you know, obviously he's sticking to criticizing him for going around and wearing like basketball shorts, I guess, is his main criticism there. But for somebody like Dr. Oz to put that forward when he's been coming out with campaign ads like this, where he is literally like dressed up like the most stereotypical hunting backdoorsy Republican that you could possibly imagine. This guy is a millionaire, okay? He's a hundred millionaire former Hollywood TV host, okay? So the idea that this guy is not going around prancing himself about pretending to be something that he's not is laughably you know ridiculous but John Fetterman has always been that guy he's always been the guy to be you know casual wearing basketball shorts he wore basketball shorts to go meet with Joe Biden so you know that's just a small part of it but I think the main point which is the point that he's avoiding in uh, bringing up here is policies right the reason I would call somebody like John Fetterman a populist has nothing to do with the types of clothing that he wears it's because he is representative of the vast majority of the American people when it comes to big policies that he is in favor of of things like Medicare for all, things like dramatic investments in uh, renewable energy, things like uh, raising the minimum wage. I mean, I could go on and on and on. That's why people call him a populist and they think you're a fake populist because you don't support anything that would materially improve the lives of average working class people while you're going out there and pretending like you're a good old folksy hunting person uh, from the backwoods. So, you know, that's just completely ridiculous already. We're only a minute into this clip though candidate for office of either party ought to be shielded from scrutiny. And that's why I've been asking him to get on the campaign trail, come play, let's talk about the cost of living in Pennsylvania, which is devastating as it is across the country, the gas prices, which are here elevated, and we know that we can help because we've got hundreds of years of natural gas under our feet. The crime in Pennsylvania is through the roof, Philadelphia experiencing the worst homicide rates in its history. And I've got to say, the only thing Joe Biden's building back better is the Republican Party, and he's doing a good job strengthening our... Okay, that part's kind of true. You got to give it to him, okay? Joe Biden not really doing a big, you know, a, a, a good enough job in uh, promoting Build Back Better or rebuilding the American, uh, you know, working class as he promised that he was going to do, but not like Dr. Oz would have anything better to propose on that front. Party, we're uniting here in Pennsylvania, and the key question that all voters are going to have to address on November 8th is, do you think Joe Biden's taking us in the right direction? And as you point out, you know, the vast majority majority are going to say no, and they're going to vote for me, which is why the Democratic Party, it's not even the Democrats, it's the far left uh, radical elements of it are, are distracting voters 
with all kinds of efforts across the country. But Okay, so I mean, he had me there for a second when he was critiquing Joe Biden's ineptitude from the position of the presidency, but then he just completely lost me when he said that the radical lefties are in control. I mean, if you just go compare John Fetterman's policy agenda versus Joe Biden's policy agenda, yeah, sure, if he was in the Senate right now, he probably would have supported most of what Joe Biden was putting forward, but on policies, he's significantly to the left of Joe Biden. So, you know, the idea that the current state of the Democratic establishment is somehow being run by the AOCs of the world or, uh, you know, the Bernie Sanders of the world is just laughable. But that's basically been what his entire campaign strategy has been uh, so far, is trying to tie John Fetterman to people like Bernie Sanders, which is also fucking hilarious, because if you go back and you look at, like, the 2020 polling data, uh, Bernie Sanders was significantly beating Donald Trump in a head-to-head -head contest, even in a state like Pennsylvania. So, uh, not exactly sure if that's going to be a good strategy to tie him to one of the most, or the single most popular uh, senators now, what, a decade straight running in uh, Bernie Sanders, but it is actually a good strategy, in my opinion, to try to tie uh, John Fetterman to Joe Biden instead of trying to go after John Fetterman on the policies that he believes, because uh, obviously Joe Biden, wildly unpopular, so that would be a good campaign strategy, but so far he hasn't really been hitting the main points on that. The American people will not be dissuaded from focusing on what matters. Well, I mean, the gas prices, the food prices alone, I mean, anyone who votes for Fetterman is just going to vote for higher gas prices and higher food prices. Everybody knows that. They should know it by now. But I want to talk about fundraising because Fetterman's total haul from individuals and committees, according to campaign finance reports, got $9.9 million. And you have $1.1 million, at least that's what's being reported, closing the gap a little bit. I guess you loaned your campaign some money, but... Um, he has five. Keep in mind, the huge, vast majority of uh, dollars that John Fetterman is bringing in are coming from small dollar donations. So uh, this guy, Dr. Oz, already has an inherent advantage because he's willing to take money from literally any ghoul within the United States that will throw money at his campaign. And still, he's getting out fundraised by like a, what, 10 to 1 ratio almost? Times as much cash on hand as you do. Is that correct? Number one. Number two. Why is that, given how important this race is for Republicans to take back the U.S. Senate? Where's the NRSC? Well, the NRSC is getting involved. The, uh, the RNC had been wonderful. The, the state uh, and national parties are doing their best, but the Democrats have very cleverly taken all these issues that have come up over, over the summer, the, uh, the Dodd decision, the, the, the concerns about guns, and they've used these as excuses to raise money from the Democratic loyalists. And interestingly, when, when Republicans get mad, we go out and mow the lawn. Democrats, when they get mad, donate money to their party. So I urge everyone, go to DrOz.com and consider supporting my campaign. Okay, listen, I'm not a big fan of like Nancy Pelosi sending out fundraising emails to people, but it's kind of a different situation for somebody like John Fetterman, who assuming he gets elected would be somebody who would actually be willing to go to the mat and fight for a lot of the things that he claims that he supports. So it's a little bit different to say like the critique of the you know establishment of the Democratic Party that is actively doing absolutely nothing in regards to gun control or abortion rights. But uh, I think it's a little bit dishonest to make that comparison with somebody like John Fetterman. But regardless, what is he actually saying here? He's saying that Democrats or John Fetterman are using the issues of uh, Roe v. Wade being overturned by our right-wing reactionary Supreme Court or a uh, lack of uh, adequate gun control leading to uh, mass shootings on a nearly daily basis in this country, that they're using that as an opportunity to fundraise. It's like, yeah, no shit. I mean, what are you doing exactly? That's, that's kind of how fundraising works. You use issues that people care about, especially in moments like this where you have rights being rolled back in regards to Roe v. Wade, and uh, you use that as an opportunity to raise funds for your campaign in the case of John Fetterman. So not exactly sure what the fuck his point is on that front. We will win and we will prevail. I don't have to raise as much money as Fetterman uh, because I'm a better candidate. It takes a lot of money to sell something you don't have, which he knows. That stated, you got to be competitive. And it's not just me. It's true of all the Senate races across the country. The Democrats are out donating and we can do better. So DrOz.com. And remember, and this is what I keep telling the folks, America is out of gas right now. Biden is out of time. Fetterman is out of the question. We have to stick up to our values. We have to get our message out. And the reality of who John Fetterman is is not known by folks in Pennsylvania. Once we get the word out, it's game over.
Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna stop it there. I mean, good luck to you, man. Good luck. If your idea of, uh, you know, pushing back against John Fetterman absolutely curb stomping you right now is to what? Go focus on his crazy radical leftist policies like universal health care, raising wages, supporting unions, uh, tackling climate change, etc. If that's your strategy for pushing back against him, please, by all means, keep doing that because uh, I can only anticipate that that's going to lead to his uh, approval rating going uh, through the roof even more so than it already is. But um, in terms of like how they've been operating their campaigns, I got to show you this clip because this was recently done by the Fetterman campaign and I think this was absolutely amazing. They have literally just been trolling the shit out of Dr. Raz throughout this entire election, basically and accurately uh, portraying him as an elitist outsider. He's not even from uh, Pennsylvania. He has houses in New Jersey. He has like nine different houses around uh, the country and around the world worth millions and millions of dollars. And uh, John Fetterman is doing a really good job at uh, portraying him as that elite outsider. And I think that's doing a uh, you know, great job for his uh, position in the uh, poll numbers right now. But in addition to that, he's also just been, you know, straight up trolling, uh, uh, trolling uh, Dr. Raz. And so this is something recent that he did. He basically had a uh, uh, clip here that he bought using one of those different apps. I forget what it's called, but um, basically uh, it's called Cameo. That's what it is. But uh, basically you can have celebrities like respond to different, you know, prompts that you give them, you know, spend a couple hundred bucks on it, but they spend a couple, a couple hundred bucks to get a uh, Jer Jersey store reality star uh, Snooki to do one of these, uh, basically giving a shout out to uh, Dr. Raz from New Jersey. So let's go ahead and watch this. Hey, May Matt. This is Nicole Snooki. Um, and I'm from Jersey Shore. I don't know if you've seen of it before. Um, but I'm a hot mess on a reality show, basically, and I enjoy life. Um, but I heard that you moved from New Jersey to Pennsylvania to look for a new job. And personally, I don't know why anyone would want to leave Jersey because it's like the best place ever and we're all hot messes. Um, but I want to say best of luck to you. I know you're away from home and you're in a new place, but Jersey will not forget you. I just want to let you know I will not forget you. Um, and don't worry because you'll be back home in Jersey soon. This is only temporary. So good luck. You got this and Jersey loves you. Mwah. Okay, so come on. Come on. That's pretty fucking good right there. Um, you know, credit to whoever on the John Fetterman campaign decided to do this. But, I mean, they literally spent, what, a couple hundred bucks to get this clip and uh, turn around and it's going wildly viral on Twitter. 83,000 likes here. You know, probably millions of views on this clip. So, you know, credit to whoever decided that that was a good idea. But then contrast, like, this trolling, which is, like, simultaneously funny but also making a good point because Dr. Raz is, like, an elite outsider millionaire who isn't even from Pennsylvania, has real, really no uh, vested stake in average working class people within Pennsylvania. So it's actually making a, a good fundamental underlying point uh, with that type of trolling. But counter that to what uh, Dr. Oz is doing on his Twitter feed. I mean, I see this every fucking day. It's shit like this. I mean, he's posting, you know, clips uh, or, uh, you know, screenshots here saying John Fetterman called for trillions more in wasteful government spending. John Fetterman, crazier than you think. And then you look down here and they have like this little uh, liberal o meter is what they're calling it. And he's like all the way over here to the left past the uh, crazy mark. So again, it's pretty pathetic. I mean, it doesn't even really seem like they're putting that much effort into this. And it looks like he actually just posted a recent clip here. Let's, let's just go ahead and watch this. It's only 43 seconds. Let's see what uh, Dr. Raz had to post here about an hour ago uh, trying to push back against John Fetterman. Joe Biden and John Fetterman, they don't look alike, but they think alike. Biden slowed energy exploration. Fetterman would shut it down with regulations and taxes causing gas prices to rise further. Biden spent trillions causing inflation to rise. Fetterman not true. Vast majority of inflationary pressures has come from corporate greed and uh, supply chain breakdowns as a result of decades of neoliberalism exporting our dom domestic manufacturing overseas uh, so U.S. multinational corporations could exploit cheap labor. So that's not the primary cause of inflation, but let's see what else he has to say. Spend even more. Biden supports liberal prosecutors, as does Fetterman, who would also release one third of all dangerous criminals. Wildly disingenuous. John Fetterman wants to release all nonviolent drug offenders. So people have, who have been, you know, thrown in jail, had their lives ruined as a result of, uh, you know, low scale petty uh, marijuana convictions and shit like that. Joe Biden hid in the basement. So was John Fetterman to avoid scrutiny of his crazy positions. He had a fucking stroke. He's actually trying to push this narrative. If you think Biden is bad, Fetterman is worse. He's crazier than you think. Let's make a change. 
Okay, so again, I mean, if this is their strategy, good luck to you. I think it's going to be, you know, completely ineffectual in terms of moving the polling data in your favor because John Fetterman already has a track record within Pennsylvania. People know who he who, who he is. He was a former mayor of a, you know, working class, uh, a former steel town in Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, he has the background as the lieutenant governor in Pennsylvania. So people know who he is. They know what he represents. And he's been the same guy consistently for years now. And then you have somebody like Dr. Oz, who's this millionaire, millionaire outsider coming in from New Jersey. Um, you know, who doesn't represent average working class people's views. So, you know, if this is his strategy, trying to portray him as crazy, radical, leftist uh, John Fetterman, then good luck to you. But uh, in terms of the polling data and what it's currently showing on this race, uh, John Fetterman has been consistently polling above uh, Dr. Oz by pretty substantial margins here, depending on which one you look at. Uh, this one, he's up by four. This one, he's up by uh, six. This one, he's up by almost 10. So, you know, it depends on which polling uh, data that you're looking at. But it seems like John Fetterman is definitely running a superior campaign. And I think one of the big issues that is going to determine who ends up winning this is uh, whether or not Dr. Oz is able to tie Joe Biden to uh, John Fetterman or vice versa, tying John Fetterman to Joe Biden and uh, really using the fact that Joe Biden is wildly uh, disliked and unpopular right now and using that as an opportunity to drag John Fetterman down with him. But if John Fetterman is able to put his policies out there, uh, make it public exactly what uh, his uh, priorities are, what he stands for, and uh, simultaneously portray Dr. Raz as the millionaire elitist outsider. Uh, that he truly is, then uh, I don't think this should be close at the end of the day. At least I hope it's not going to be. And uh, hopefully John Fetterman will become a, the uh, next senator of Pennsylvania.